All right. We're just two buds here catching up. We were both in the Navy station in San Diego at the same time. We don't really get a chance to catch up too often, but we also have both went through boot camp and had our own experiences. So we've never actually talked about this shit together. So I decided to we'll top on here, record it, talk about our old boot camp days real quick. And hopefully maybe some people that are joining the Navy want to hear it. If not, at least we get to bullshit with each other for a little bit. So let's just let's just kick it right off. What's the first thing? Obviously, you go to the recruiter, you find out your date, you do what you got to do. We can we can talk about the specifics of that stuff later, but you get on the plane, get to Chicago, you hop on the bus, and then you get to boot camp. What what do you remember? directly after that i remember first i remember pulling up and i knew uh i already made the mistake because i still had extremely long hair long curly hair and everyone else (laughs) did not have long hair they all had almost everyone had a buzz cut already so i already realized oh shit but uh yeah they just immediately got on the bus started screaming at us i think we got there at like three or four in the morning so it was dark everyone was tired and they just start yelling at us to get off the bus and line up and uh basically the rest of the time you're just treated like cattle you know ran to this room wait in that room take this test get blood drawn get a shot for yeah the for days this this psychological stuff starts immediately they yeah. don't want you to feel like an individual. Everything from that second was in groups. 30, 40 people doing stuff at the same time for a month, for a couple months from there, right? Yeah, it was, uh, I think we we're in boot camp like two months, three months. I can't, I can't remember exactly, but yeah, the first week or so, you don't do anything but get like processed and and it's just groups of you get moved from one room to another room to it just for days and you you don't really get to sleep they'll give you a time where you can put your head down on the desk and rest a little but it's a so you, you take all <clears throat> all your clothes all the off. stuff that you came with put it in a box ship it yeah. back home and they give you all new shit yeah you get I remember, yeah and then the haircut right yeah, they put you out there in some reality, sweatpants, sweatshirt. You're lucky if you get the right size. And they they shave your head and give you uh, the bare necessities you need to survive. <laughs> some little soaps and shampoos and stuff. And basically like the little hotel size ones. And uh, yeah, eventually once you get through all the processing, then you'll go to... Uh, what they call your ship or whatever, which is really just a building. But uh, you'll go in a, another room, which is a birthing, and that's where you'll be housed with, I think we have like 80 people in my class, um, all in just a big open room, and a bunch of bunk beds kind of in a circle. Uh, <laughs> we got a, everybody has to basically place all of their stuff in the same spots under the bed so that it all fit in there I, so this is the first funny story i got so when, we, when you first get in you get all your new stuff well there's like you said 80 people in there you're getting sweaty every day this stuff's got to get washed so you need to know whose stuff is what so they have us laying out the shirts to put the stamps on them remember that yeah the well, at the end of the day they gave you instructions specific step-by-step instructions on how to fold the shirt and then where to place the stamp so once you did exactly what they said you placed the stamp on there and it's going to be on your lower back in the middle 
let's say. I can't even remember exactly where it was, but let's just say it was in the middle of your lower back. Tram stamp. Tram stamp. Yeah, tram stamp. That would be a good way to. Well, you look around, and this is the first time I realized that there's very dumb people in this world. Like, when you grow up in a certain area, like, I'm from New Jersey, so you you got that New Jersey near Philly, I guess you could say, to make it more specific. You got that tough guy mentality, and we all seem dumb, but once you get around some motherfucker from the backwoods of Louisiana, and you then you realize, like, yeah, you know what? Maybe I'm not that dumb. Because these motherfuckers come up with the stamp on the collar of the shirt <laughs> in the front. Like, how do you... Someone with the with the stamp on the sleeve of the shirt? Well, and one of the other best parts about boot camp is I don't know how your RDCs were, but I had two two of them that were hilarious. And I didn't have to do none. I would just sit back, do what I'm told, put the stamp in the right spot, and then just die laughing when they rip these other kids to shreds for being idiots. That's one yeah. of the memories I got, just laughing so mm-hmm. hard at that. Yeah, there was a lot of comedy. A lot of the times where I would just be cracking up laughing because someone would be getting roasted because they did just the the stupidest shit for no reason, you know? It was just... And it's grown men. A lot of these guys are, you know, 23, 24 already. Well, a lot of them are 19 and 20, but they you could tell... we were all dumb back then, if you think about it now, now that we're <laughs> now that we're older. But there was just some that were real dumb. Yeah, I didn't know how they made it that far. Well, yeah, so like you were saying, it's called the uh, what what is it called? I forget now. Oh. So well before we graduate we have to we have to complete battle stations. Battle stations. And uh, battle stations is just like a, it's a huge test that lasts all night. And they put you on this like replica of a ship, a huge ship. And uh, you'll start it. First, you'll march there to this building. And uh, you probably get there at like seven or eight. And you go in there and they. Well, you you already been up since five o'clock in the morning. Yeah, you. You, in boot camp, you, your day starts no later than 6 a.m. every day. So, yeah, so now, it's seven, now it's 7 and 8 o'clock at night, and you're yeah. just going out. You're on a full day's worth of uh, boot camp, and uh, now it's time to take your big test that lasts all night. So you get on the ship, the replica of a ship. You've never seen this before, and uh, they have you start doing, like, drills, normal drills. And then... Uh, well, let's... Let's paint the picture a little better. So everything that we've done from the second we got in there has either been learning how to get the final March process down for graduation, and then you got the other side, which is the practical stuff, firefighting, rope tying, rescuing. Yeah, it's a, it's a huge test. It's a test yeah. for... So there's a whole bunch of different learning. scenarios that you're put in. And the goal is to have your class of 80 complete all those tasks. Yeah, so now, so you're put into groups and uh, you don't get to pick your groups or whatever. You're just assigned a team. And uh, you go on the ship and you're doing just normal, normal tasks that you would do on a ship as if you were underway Um, oh yeah we were broken down into smaller groups right yeah i believe there was like eight to ten people per per team yeah yeah it wasn't all 80 in one shot no we were spread out with a bunch of random people um but we were doing like everyday drills on the on the ship that we would be doing like more in the ship when it lands um radio communications all that and then in the middle, um, you come under attack. 
randomly. You get hit with some torpedoes and when that happens like the whole ship shakes and everything and you get knocked to your feet and then it starts flooding and you have to learn how to like stop the flooding isolate it get rid of the art the, the armament all kinds of stuff it's a huge yeah, disaster we we're under yeah, attack. We give away too much just in case they still do it the same way yeah but uh yeah so the first couple hours you're yeah it comes that shit comes out of nowhere yeah it's completely and it's, unexpected and, and this thing mm-hmm. lasts for what, 24 hours right so not not 24 hours i believe it's like a 12 it lasts all night you start at like 7 and you don't get done till uh, 7 a.m oh yeah so you're up for... so you're up all night and then in my case, my team did not work good together. Uh, we <laughs> failed. We just failed miserably. I remember a couple tasks where we were supposed to do where we all died, and it was we, we just didn't do good. So they told us we, we failed, and you need to pass this to graduate boot camp. So I was stressing, you know, what? I didn't pass it. And... Uh, they told me, okay, well, you can do it again tonight. And if you pass tonight, then you'll be good for graduation was the next day. Was so, it just the, was it just your group of eight to ten people? I believe there was one other group that they failed as well. Oh, and um, <laughs> Well, so, obviously I know the ending, but <laughs> well, it was it was a very brutal couple days for me because after the first battle stations, you know, we get out like 6 a.m. You don't get to go to sleep or anything. We drilled all day practicing our marching for graduation. And then by yeah, the time we were done. You don't, out, you, don't get, you don't get done this thing at 8 in the morning and then go back and sleep it off. No, there's no nap. normal. They got you through a normal. That, yeah. Right, in, right into a full schedule. So I practiced drill for literally eight hours and then eventually I get to go eat dinner and then I get ready for battle stations again, which is the same shit. No. The, the whole night again. And yeah, I've not been for a long time. I never knew that. It was so I know that you end up graduating. Yeah, I, I, I know you have to do it twice. Eventually. I made it. There was one part where uh, I was falling asleep, like in the graduation while we were marching, because eventually I got through battle stations. They're like, "Okay, you pass." Then my graduation was like at ten in the morning, so I finished battle stations at seven a.m. Eat breakfast, get ready for graduation, do graduation, finish oh. that by like one, and then we get liberty. And by this time, you know, I'm so hyped because this is. Liberty is the first time we get to leave the base in nice. like three months. So you can kind of do whatever you want. I guess I could have went to the room and went to sleep, but I was like, no way. Yeah, and I went out to, to downtown Did Chicago. Yeah, family come? My, I had a, my parents, my brother, my one of my buddies. Well, yeah. you're from quite farther away, though. Yeah, I didn't I didn't have anyone come. But uh I went to Chicago and was like living it up a little bit, you know, just graduated in my dress uniform and whatnot. But we had to be back by like midnight or ten or something like that. And I remember when I got back and I was like I was like starting to hallucinate. I couldn't like the simplest things I couldn't wrap my brain around. Like I was trying to get in my bunk and I couldn't figure out to, how to get my uniform off, like <laughs> because I hadn't slept in so long. My brain was just like, it was done. It was fried. That, yeah, to, and to this day, that's still the longest. There ain't no, there ain't no Red Bulls. No, it was nothing. You had a little Not fucking, even soda. Back you had a little then. green canteen with some lukewarm water. <laughs> that's all you had. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, that was to this day the longest I've ever been awake, and yeah, it was it was a tough one, but definitely, definitely will never forget that experience. Battle stations back to back nights, 
Did you? Oh, well, I got to backtrack a little. But just a quick, a quick story. I don't know if you had anything similar. You know how you had to be on watch, right? Yeah. You had the fake, fake belt, the fake gun. You had to stand across from the doorway, four-hour shift, whatever. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm asleep. And I hear the door slam open, and I, I wake up, but I don't want to move. And I just hear screaming. I'm like, oh, shit. I kind of just roll over to the other side so I could see where the commotion's coming from. The dude that was on watch got tired and crawled up into his bed with the gun on and the belt still on him, gun on his hip out cold in his bunk and if you don't have any military experience like they treat that gun like that's a real gun like yeah. they're not they were freaking out on this kid and then he just packed all his shit up and i've never seen him again i don't know what happened but something like that they'll either recycle you or I don't, I don't know that his end fate but that's when i that's the first time i realized like oh shit you gotta play by the rules here because <laughs> ugly. you don't want to stay there any longer yeah when they're like if you're on week five and they're like wanting to cycle you back to week one yeah, it, I, I, there was one kid that could not get the mile and a half time i was in pensacola for five months. He was in the same class as me in boot camp. I was in Pensacola for five months and I seen him rolling in. This what and this kid actually was the dumb backwoods Louisiana kid. Just also happened to be sloppy fat and took him five months to it was a mile and a half in a minute and or what what's normal? I think it was 12 minutes? I don't know. 13? Yeah, minutes? I think it was 13 minutes. I don't even remember. It wasn't anything I even had to train for. I mean, I would love to say I could do it right now, but I'd probably die at a mile and a quarter. <laughs> but still, five, five months it took, a, it took him to get a 13-minute mile? That's insane. Like, we dump, we dump people out of there. Yeah. Well, we, all right. I got a good story, but I want to save it. You got anything? Because the, uh, I'll just tell a pre set up to my best story I got in my whole boot camp experience. There's a guy that gets, the position of choosing who goes on watch and what time. I forget the term for it now. But Yeoman? Uh, huh? Was it the Yeoman? It could be. That sounds like a very familiar term. They were the they were bookkeepers of some sort. Yeah. Anyway, I became friends with this kid and and basically got set up to where I didn't get put on watch the whole time I was in there. So every night I got to get a good night's sleep. I didn't have to get up in the middle of the night and do a four-hour watch. And that didn't have to strap that gun on once until the very last night. Because he says, I'm going to put you on watch because you're funny and I want you to do something funny. And I said, I'm not a fucking comedian, dude. <laughs> Like, just because I can crack a joke doesn't mean I could do stand-up in front of 80 people. I was like, I'll see. I'll see if I can come up with something. And then I spent the next couple of days figuring that out. But we'll get to that in a minute. So, what? You, we, you had no idea what your job was going to be, or did you already know what your job was going to be at that point? No, I got reclassified. 
What was it originally? Uh, IT. See, that's another thing I want to bring up. I had all kinds of jobs to choose from, but I didn't know shit about what they were. So I had the IT in there, a couple other things that were way better than what I chose. <laughs> and I ended up choosing literally the, the job that you can have the lowest ASVAB score possible and get in, which actually worked to my advantage. Yeah, because you had an easy job. Well, and the guys that I was competing against in, in school and for promotions were not as bright. Yeah. There, there's some characters. We'll get into we'll get into the specifics of them. But maybe at some point we gotta have dude, what if we can get Michael Bruton on here? I don't know where he where he would be, but do you I remember him? him? Yeah, his, he's, He'd be friends hilarious. My, he's friends with uh, my barber, actually. I guarantee he's down in Florida smoking black and mild right now. 100%. <laughs> he was in Florida for a while, but I think he moved. I can get his contact info. And Barcelona? Not Barcelona. I think Barcelona's on IG. I, could hit him I can reach out to him. But yeah, it'd but be cool to have some of them guys on here, see some of the hear some of their experiences. Yeah. But what do you what was your favorite part? The boot camp? Yeah. Like what part to me it was like I said earlier, the boot the uh, RDCs making fun of the people that were doing dumb shit. And they deserved it. But it was fun. like I remember just my sides and my cheeks hurting like on a regular basis. Yeah, as my them just roasting them, roasting them, and roasting. I don't know. I boot camp was fun to me. It was never like the only hard part was like the lack of sleep all the time. But I got used to that eventually. But it was I was having a good time because. It was pretty easy for me to follow the rules. It was just like just listen to what they said and do that. Don't yeah. do your own thing and you're fine. And that was like that was really tough for a lot of people. And I that's just a, I couldn't understand why. That's a good point. That's a very good point. Because that's what it was. That's what they were making fun of. It's simple. Just follow they give you one instruction and then they give you another instruction and then another. All you have to do is step by step do what they say. Don't try to get ahead. That's what they're trying to trick you into doing. They don't the, want you to be first. They don't finish. want anyone to stand out. They want you to get used to being in a group. The they don't want you to be a perfect to shine. example because for that, it was just like we're sitting there. We all have their shirts in front of us, like five shirts. And all they say is, all right, pull out, pull out your stamp. There's one guy to my left who pulls out a stamp and just stamps all of his shirts. They didn't tell us where to stamp them yet. They didn't, yeah. tell, <laughs> they didn't tell us to stamp multiple shirts. All they said was pull out your stamp. And my boy just said, fuck it. I'm going to stamp them all right on the sleeve. He just hammered down. Yeah, and that... Uh... And guaranteed it wasn't in the right spot, and then he probably got roasted. Oh, absolutely, because he... Which would have been the highlight of my day. It was just one a whole thing, lot of that. I was just thinking, the one thing that made me nervous is when they would have a uniform inspection or something like that, and they'd ask you, like, Navy questions but it's stuff that they know you didn't know the answer to and regardless of how crisp and clean your uniform was they're still going to ruffle your handkerchief while they're trying to check you out to mess it up to get you with something like but i would always feel stupid if i couldn't answer the questions yeah there's stuff that 
I didn't know any of those. I didn't, uh, my recruiter forgot to tell me I should know like the 10 general <laughs> orders and all those. So I rolled up and I didn't know any of that shit. And there was people, everyone knew it. That was another thing I found out on the bus. Like, oh shit, I'm in a tight spot already. My hair was longer than everyone. And they all have this little book that they're looking at. And I didn't have no book to look at. And I was like, what is that? And they're like, yeah, you're supposed to know these. They're like, your recruiter didn't tell you? And I was like, fuck my recruiter. Where'd you get that book? He's like, yeah, I've had that book the whole time I've been in the program. I was like, I didn't have that. Sh-. So I went there not knowing those things. And i am be honest, I just kind of weaseled my way through that. Anytime I got one of those questions, it was, uh, it was tough. Did you ever get hit up as like, uh, an example and they worked you out? Oh, I got, I got beat a, a couple times where uh, I got caught, like, dicking around or something. I know, uh, I can't remember. Oh, I think, I think I did some shady shit because we were taking the showers and every, you had a certain amount of time to take showers. Well, there was a few people in there that would, like, take forever and just wait till the last second to come out. But mm-hmm. they'd be running around. So I made sure there was some water in some areas where they were going to slip. And sure enough, they were cutting it close, and they they fucking were running out, and then they slipped right there, and they came flying out the bathroom, just sliding out, <laughs> knocking multiple people down as they're trying to run, because they were they're were like doing the countdown and everything. And then uh, some little rat was just like, "Oh yeah, he put water there," and they I remember in particular they were they they made me go in the middle because we had our stuff kind of like in a circle. And then he made me do uh, what were called the swims, where you lay on your stomach, you put your arms like above your head, yeah, yeah, your feet, and you just like paddle and kick your feet, and you can't let them <laughs> touch the ground. And he left me there doing that shit forever, man. I remember. I just remember like at the end, my stupid like steel toes were like they kept hitting the ground. You could hear them like back <laughs> on the ground. And I was just like, yeah, you. It felt like I was there for an hour, but I was probably there for like thirty minutes. I got, I got put in a bad spot one time, <laughs> only once. He only got me once, but he got me good. I had the light blue. I don't know. It, it was just a long sleeve button up shirt. Utilities. Yeah, the utility. Dude, these things are thick, boys, too. <laughs> and. We were just sitting around polishing our shoes or something, and he just comes out. You guys aren't you guys aren't doing this fast enough. Looks right at me. Start doing eight counts or whatever it was. I'm like, fuck, man, <laughs> dude. By the time I, I don't know how long it was, like you said, felt like forever. But my light blue utilities were a dark blue. By the time I was done sweating my balls off. For God knows how long. But I was just in the... Our RDC was pretty... All the time. Pretty hateful. He used to he used to tell us, oh, fuck with me right now. He's like, I love taking you guys to, to lunch sweaty. And <laughs> yeah. Dude, would, that'd be the worst, too. He would, he would fucking line us up early, bro, like 15 minutes before lunch. And he would just walk up and down the line as we're sitting there in the height line waiting for us to fuck up and if too many people fucked up he would just all right and just work us out until we're all soaked in sweat and he'd be like all right let's go to lunch he what used time? to love taking us to lunch so all the other people could see us no we just got our ass beat <laughs> what time of year were you in boot camp winter me too. Yeah. No, 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 no. It was like going into summer. So spring. Because it got really hot and humid. What was that? Yeah. So I was in there. I was in there from October to December. Oof. Or beginning you of January. Did you have to deal with the snow? Like huh? Did you have to do uh, deal with that snow? 
Uh, yeah, there was a couple times where we had to just stay inside and practice marching all day because you couldn't even walk from one building to the other. <laughs> just like one or two days. Yeah. But then that that uh, lake effect snow or whatever, it could be it could be nothing, and then you could have like two feet of snow like within a couple hours. Yeah, I didn't get to see too much of that. It was cold. It's cold as shit, though. Yeah, I remember it getting, oh. like, humid. So, I'm going to save I'm gonna save my end of boot camp story for another time, because we've already been going for a good solid 30 minutes. But we should talk about what we want to do with this. So, basically... We're two friends, we're two buds, I should say, which is going to be the name of a podcast, which I don't even want to say that, because hopefully it turns into one, but we don't know what we're doing. We're just friends that want to be able to talk about stuff that we normally wouldn't talk about. Reach out to buddies of ours from the Navy that we normally wouldn't reach out to. Nick Park. I know there's a bunch of guys. There's a bunch of guys that we would like to reach out to, and for some reason, I just felt compelled to record it because when I was joining the Navy, I was looking for all the Navy content I could find, and this is the rawest form you're going to get. We have no agenda. We just want to talk about the old days, and I know these stories were pretty straightforward. But we've been on deployments to different countries and had quite a few times spent at the bar figuring out where we're going to spend the night. <laughs> we didn't want to. We didn't want to kick it off with the spicy stuff. But you gotta imagine being in San Diego for four years as young twenty-year-old men that are all wild because we think we're something special because we just got out of boot camp just running the mock downtown for a couple months but hopefully we can get the uh lighting a little better on my end so you can see how beautiful my face really is <laughs> <laughs> and you you got anything else to say to the people before we end this one. Well, hope you enjoy. All right, tell your friends.